In this video, I'd like to talk about the midline of sinusoidal functions from their equations. And remember that a sinusoidal function could be either the cosine or the sine function. And the graph of this function below, this is the cosine of some angle, which we can call x. And what we've seen in previous videos is that these sinusoidal functions have midlines, periods, and amplitudes. And remember that the midline is essentially the y value that splits this entire curve in half. Or in other words, the distance from, let's say, the minimum to the midline is equal to the distance from the midline to the maximum. This distance right here from the midline to either the peak or the valley of our sinusoidal function, this is actually what we call the amplitude. And the period is essentially the horizontal distance that this function repeats infinitely many times. Or another way to say that is, let's say we're starting with this point right here. One full period would be where the function doesn't repeat itself. So it goes up, comes back down through the midline, it goes down to its minimum, and then back up to essentially its starting point, and then it will just repeat that pattern infinitely many times. Or you could think of the period as essentially the distance between two consecutive minimum points or two consecutive maximum points. The other one would probably be right about there. But for this video, we want to focus on the midline of these sinusoidal functions and how to interpret it from its equation. So let's say we have some general function and think about what it means to shift that function either up or down. Let's say we have the function y is equal to f of x, and we want to essentially create a new function, which we can call g of x, where we essentially take our original function, f of x, and just add, we could say, on the outside of the function. We're not adding to the independent variable, we are adding essentially to the overall function or the y value of the function. And we can just add some variable amount, let's just call it h. And by adding h on the outside, essentially all of the y values will now be h units higher. Unless h is negative, then all of the y values will be h units lower. But by adding this constant on the outside, this we can say shifts f of x up or down h units. So if we have some function, let's say it looks something like this, and we can call this our f of x, and we want to consider what is g of x, which is f of x plus 2, let's say. So this will take all of our y values and shift them up 2 units no matter where they are. This will be a little bit difficult to draw, but essentially just imagine the entire curve being shifted up two units. This would actually look a little bit different, but you get the main idea. Every y value on this function f of x, when relating it to this function g of x, all the y values will now be two units higher. And likewise, if we subtract five or any constant, that will shift the entire function f of x, this yellow curve, down five units or whatever that subtraction was. So with our sinusoidal function, you can imagine right now that we have this function cosine of x, and you can imagine that we are essentially adding nothing to that, which is why the parent function for the cosine or the sine function has a midline value of just y equals zero. This is our midline, the equation of our midline. And if we were to add or subtract to the function, we add or subtract on the outside, this will shift this midline up or down. So let's say we're looking at y is equal to the cosine of x minus two. That will essentially take each of these different y values on our original parent function and now shift it all down two units since every y value will be two units less than what it originally was. Maybe right there, this point will go down here. This point will go down to roughly right about there. This point right here will be right about here. And if we roughly sketch this in, we can see that 
the entire function gets shifted down two units, though that's not the best drawing. And to really understand this, it helps to use a graphing calculator and look at many different possibilities and just see what happens to our curve. So let's look at examples using the graphing calculator Desmos, since that's a free application. And what you can see is that we have this cosine of x graph, the parent function for the cosine function. But if we want, we can also look at the sine function since it will work the same way. And to shift this midline, this horizontal line, y is equal to zero, we just need to add or subtract on the outside of the function. You can see if I add one, it shifts everything up one unit. I add two, it shifts everything two units. If I add five, then it shifts everything up five units. We're now notice that the midline would be in the middle of the minimum and maximum. And since the minimum's at four, the maximum's at six, the midline, it's hard to get an exact value, but will be somewhere around five. You can see the y, the y value was the second value there. And if we wanted to shift it down, of course, we would just use subtraction. You see subtracting by four shifts everything down four units. Or in other words, it shifts our midline down four units. And this will give you a rough idea since this is not an exact coordinate point. Now, like I mentioned, though, we can also look at the sine function since it works pretty much the exact same way. Remember that the sine and the cosine are just shifted horizontally from each other, where this is a vertical shift. So if we subtract 3 from the sine function, it shifts it down 3. If we add 4 to the sine function, it shifts everything up 4 units. And in the next video, we will look at specific examples where we're given the equation of our sinusoidal function and we need to determine the midline value, though it's essentially going to be whatever we are adding or subtracting to the outside of the function.